Carol Spinney, along with filmmaker Dave LaMattina, and Oscar the Grouch. Wake up, Oscar. <laughs> Oscar, what, 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 who's what, asleep. What join, I miss? Join me in Studio Q. Hello, Carol. Hey, how you doing, John? Hey, Dave. Hi. And hello, Oscar. Uh, have a rotten day. <laughs> thank you. Yes, thank you, Oscar. Well, Carol, it's nice to have you sit, seated at the table, by the way. The last time you you have been here once before, but you were you were kind of sitting on the floor. Uh, Oscar was here. Yeah, he was I, the star. I think, he the was here. I don't think I was... I was passed out on the floor. <laughs> right, right. Uh, you okay, Oscar? No. <laughs> uh, okay, let me get to some of this story. Story, as the legend goes, you were handpicked by Jim Henson to play Big Bird back in 1969. How did how did you end up getting this part? Well, I, I uh, was working for ten years in Boston, doing a, a, a on a circus show, the Bozo Show, and I played about nine different walkabout characters and a boxing kangaroo and all that kind of stuff. But it was kind of frothy. Uh, it paid very well, but it paid better than Sesame Street, actually. But Jim, I, I decided I uh, wanted to do better things, so I went to a puppet festival, and uh, I saw some inspiring stuff the, in 1968. So I decided to create a theater that incorporated animation and puppetry all to connect, re, re, made to go together. And it, and it went terribly. It went terribly. Yes. Yeah. And I was very funny in my desperation, apparently, because Jim Benson came backstage afterwards. I knew he was in the audience. It was really upsetting to know the show was, was a piece of crap. And uh, it was pretty good. To, it, I did it once before at Binghamton. It went very well. And uh, so when there, I did it there, and everything went wrong. So I'm very dejected of putting stuff back in their boxes, getting ready to leave. And uh, I hear a voice saying, I liked what you're trying to do. It was Jim Henson, and he recounted some things that he had had go wrong, and uh, that was pretty exciting. And he pretty much offers you the gig on, on yeah, the spot. He says, said, Come and uh, work would some... you like to come to New York and talk about Muppets? I said, what do you mean? He said, well, you ought to work for me, because I want to build a large, goofy bird and a, uh, a grouch who lives in trash. I said, really? Well, that sounds interesting. And, and he said, yeah, so do you want to work for me? I, I said, yeah. And uh, he was he was a genius, and uh, he'd been he he wasn't a businessman particularly, because when I asked him how much I'd get paid, he said I was two hundred dollars a week, <laughs> five days a week in New York City for two hundred. I said that's not even uh, union scale. You have to. Be. Sounds like he was a businessman actually. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So w when did you first fall in love with puppeteering? Uh, when did when did you have a sense that this is what you wanted to do with your life? I was about five years old. I saw a puppet show. And uh, I was so surprised by it because it was just, it was a simple little thing about three little kittens who had lost their mittens. They just did the song, which has about three verses, where the mother says they have to find the kitten, the mittens, and then they found the mittens, and then she, they could have some pie. And it was as simple as that. But I was five, that was perfect. And these, the puppeteers walked out from behind the stand up stage, and I think they were college students. But they each had a little kitten on their hands. And I thought that was pretty good. You could tell the story much better if you had some things to go along with it, like puppets. So uh, I, I, when I was eight, I found a puppet for five cents at a rummage sale. And I had a stuffed green flannel snake my mother had <laughs> made for Christmas because we didn't have much money. Uh, nobody did back in the early 40s. The war was on. And uh, so uh, she built me a Punch and Judy show. Which she was from England. She used to see Punch and Judy shows on, at Blackpool on the beach for Hapney. And uh, my father was born in Canada, so uh, I don't know if he'd seen any puppet shows, but he wasn't a pu fan of the puppets until I got going with it. Then he became one of my fans. Uh, it was, I, I put together this show, for, I, I put a sign in the post office, puppet show Spinney's Barn, <laughs> two cents, you know, on a, it was a Tuesday afternoon or something at, at two o'clock. We didn't worry about, know about weekends are better probably, you know. But uh, of course, mo we, mothers didn't wa work back then very, very much. So uh, I had uh, 16 people come. I made 32 cents. And I said, this is, I'm going to get rich, obviously. <laughs> By the way, as <clears throat> you're talking to me, you're looking at me and you're talking to me uh, and you're focusing. Oscar's moving around here. He's, his eyes, he's paying attention to things going on in the studio. This, he's just an extension of you, right? I mean, you, you, you were, when you're... Sorry to wake you up here, Oscar, but when you're 
you are you even thinking about Oscar, or is he just when you're talking to me and he's moving around and, and um, he's got his own separate <clears throat> identity? Well, I, I generally he seems to stay alive, although he was passed out there for a while. I didn't go to bed last night. Yeah, we heard that, Oscar. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Oh, it, uh, going it, back there now. <laughs> Wake up. Dave, let me bring you in here. You you grew up, like many of us, with Sesame Street. I understand you enthousi- enthusiastically interned at the Sesame Workshop when you first started out. Why and when did you decide to make a film about Carol Spinney? Uh, it was actually right after the internship. Uh, well, not right after. I guess a couple of years after the internship, I was sitting there telling someone how I got started in the industry. I said, oh, I, I used to intern at Sesame Workshop. And she said, oh, well, um, I'm related to Carol Spinney. And it's embarrassing to say, but I didn't know who that was. Um and I didn't know he was Big Bird. I didn't know that he originated Big Bird and Oscar and that he was still doing it. Uh, so, you know, I kept thinking about that. And I, I said to to my partners, Chad and Clay, you guys know about this guy? And then we all started talking about it and said, this would make a fascinating film. And then the more we talked to our friend and the more she told us about him, it's like, this guy is amazing. Um, and so we we reached out to Sesame and thought they would say no. And they said, why don't you come in and meet him? And we met Carol and his, his wife, Deb. And from that moment on, we... We knew that we had to do this, and they, thankfully they agreed. Uh, Carol, when Dave says, I didn't know who that was, has that been a, an interesting juxtaposition for you for over four decades? That, yeah. That and you've got these iconic characters that you are, but that most people don't know who Carol Spinney is? Right. Well, I, uh, it didn't bother me. People said, doesn't it bother you? You don't get the fame or claim. I go, any, but part of that, the, the, they pointed out, I go any place, nobody knows who I am. And even now, it's starting to be a little bit more. I was like recognized on Bloor Street yesterday, and uh, the nice person who spoke to me had seen the movie the night before the premiere. And uh, she took a, a, a selfie with me and her and put it on the internet right away. So I'm, 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 my, my cover is blown. Well, first of all, you've never lamented the, the fact that you're not no, personal. It didn't bother me because most, most of all, it's kind of... Uh, and I, I had other things come along that proved that I was right. It was kind of nice not to be known. And uh, I got to be great close friends with William Jennings, the great singer. And uh, he was such a nice guy. And of all the people I've worked with, hundreds of famous people, big name, movie stars, uh, Henry Fonda even. Uh, but uh, I didn't get to know them. You know, they would do a little bit, and that was it. But uh, I got to... John, uh, to uh, Waylon and his wife, Jessie, uh, they lived in Nashville at the time. And uh, I'd go down, we spent some, a Christmas with him. We'd travel on his bus. Mm-hmm. His road manager would drive our car behind so we could be in the bus with him. So when we got there, we'd have a car. And you saw what somebody who does get recognized and he has says, to go don't, through. And he says, don't get recognized. You're going to hate it. And it, I had a situation like that proved, like at Worcester, Mass. We were at a restaurant, and uh, he's got a, he's chewing a steak he'd eaten, he'd bought, ordered, and... Uh, the waitress herself comes over and says, uh, Waylon, can you sign this for me and this one too? Uh, and he said, well, do you mind if I finish eating my steak? He says, no, I, I'm off now. I've got to have it now. Do it right now. And I, I thought that was a little bit uh, pushy. Do you, do you worry now yeah. with this documentary that your anonymity is blown? No, <laughs> I, I can't. I've gotten so— uh, You're okay I've with had it? so many years without it. It's kind of nice to have it. Yeah. Do you do you, so back to that 1969, the beginnings of Sesame Street and the beginnings of Big Bird? And there's this interesting story because we all think we know Big Bird, but Big Bird was a little different when when the show first began. Uh, it was kind of a goofy character, right? And and then uh, it transferred, and, and you were quite dejected. I mean, you almost wanted to leave Sesame Street. And yeah, then- well, I, I didn't like being in New York. Uh, the pay wasn't enough. I, I didn't want to sell my house in the country because I never find a, a huge piece of land I bought for almost nothing, and you couldn't replace that. And, uh, but where was the eureka moment about turning Big Bird into a big kid? Well, uh, it was a couple of months, I think, into the show because uh, nobody knew what the character was until we were on the air. I didn't even know. And I said to Jim, what do you, what's he like? What do you want me to Is he a parrot? Or, you know, and uh, he said, no, he just uh, talked like a regular, but a, like a yokel perhaps, like, oh, hi there. And so when he was first on the air, it was like, oh, here I am, <laughs> a big bird. And he was just a goofy, silly bird. But as we as it it evolved, the show quickly evolved as the writers knew what we were really doing, and they started writing for the show. And a scene came along where Big Bird was supposed to uh, uh, want to go into a daycare center. I wonder why all these kids are going in, and they seem to be having fun. He wondered why he couldn't join them. 
But I said, you know, if he was just a big, kind of slow, uh, clumsy oaf, what's he doing there? <laughs> but if he was a kid who just had, because there's big kids and little kids. I remember there was a boy when I was in first grade, he, his head, he was a head taller than I, and he seemed like a skyscraper to me. And so why, why, I was the smallest boy in the class, which is another satisfaction since uh, big, he's the biggest character on television. You were bullied, too, as a kid. Right? I was, yeah. Because a lot of kids get it, and it's kind of shame. Stop bullying kids, huh? Gee. Because uh, they, they, they're often somebody you might uh, say, I was, he was a friend of mine. I was a friend to him later on. I th- and when did you have a sense that Big Bird... So, so I think he should have been... I told him he should be a kid right, right there. First of all, you, you, you call Big Bird a he, but does Big Bird have a, gen- a gender? Yeah, I figured... I don't think I'd do it, make him very feminine. I think he's kind of androgynous. You know, yeah. He's just kind of a male. And uh, um, But, you know, he's a little too young. He's only six. Big Bird and, is six. Yeah. And and when did you know he became, a, he was a superstar? I mean, when did you really feel the, the, the reach of the reson, how Big Bird was resonating around the world? Well, before the year was out, um, I think it was right shortly after that, the New York Times did a poll and... They said that Big Bird was the most popular children's character in America, and uh, I was making uh, the first year. Yeah, that, that's how quickly it happened. Yeah, Jim called me into his office, and he had the most fabulous little office, big uh, moose over the uh, thing made out of that would lit up at night because he was really hollow and made of paper, mm-hmm. and uh, he, he was an incredible guy, and so that was very pleasing. He didn't pay very well, but. Uh, I was, you, I you mentioned that a few times. Yeah, oh, it, <laughs> you're I was, clearly I was, a little sore making, about that. Well, I was making an awful lot more money in Boston on one channel, and here we were on 275 channels at the time, and uh, and I was not making ends meet. Please tell me that's changed. Oh, over it the changed. Years. Yeah, yeah, it got to be much better. I'm not complaining at all. Dave, what what have you learned about? I mean, following Carol around, doing all these interviews, doing, making this documentary. What have you learned besides the incredible? physical toll it plays. I mean, this is remarkable. You see in the film that you've got one hand up in the air the whole time with Big Bird's mouth and you've got, you kind of, all limbs are moving and uh, this, uh, besides that, what have you learned about Carol's ability to create characters such as Big Bird and, and Oscar here and make them come alive and where that comes from? You know, Carol is such an emotional person uh, and his wife, Deb, in the film says that when Carol retells you a story about anything he's ever felt that's emotional, He's not just retelling the story. He's actually reliving that emotion. He can still connect with that emotion. And that's just something that he was born with. And that comes through in both of his characters. And so I think Big Bird connects with people because of that. And I think Big Bird is such a nuanced character. He's so um, much richer emotionally than so many of the other of the Muppets. And that's not to say that they're not great, but that's why Big Bird connects with people. Big Bird radiates pure love, and people respond to that. And Carol and Deb together radiate that same pure love. Uh, Deb's here, right? She is absolutely Hi, Deb. Here. Nice to have you here. She's behind the glass there. And and Carol, where does, I mean, at one point in the film, somebody says that, you, you know, if you look inside Carol, you'll see feathers. I mean, where, where does Carol Spinney end and Big Bird begin? How, how, how much do you feel that you are these characters? Well... I, I know one time he was Big Bird was literally attacked by a bunch of uh, college students and they stripped a lot of feathers off and one tried to take one of the eyes they broke it yeah. and uh, I, when I saw him lying on the ground on the floor and it looked like he just, it was wrecked a huge area of feathers missing on his chest uh, I, 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 I realized how I felt about him I, it was like my little boy had been attacked and wrecked and uh, so I I realized he's I don't feel like in spite of the title of the movie, I Am Big Bird, I don't feel like I am in a way. I bring him to life. I'm his soul, perhaps. And he, uh, so he th- lives in my heart when I walk away from the puppet. I've never owned him or anything. And uh, so he, he get, that goes into a box, and he's pretty bored right now, probably looking at him. There's no light in that big box. He stands up the whole time he's gone. He, I think I'd like to lie down once in a while. <laughs> Birds don't lie down, bird. Oh, I'm not much of a bird. And and Big Bird is uh, uh, Oscar. How do you feel about Big Bird? Well, uh, I, I think he's a turkey. Yeah. <laughs> you do. You, right, right. Never you're cared not, for him. You're not a fan. 
No, I'd I like to invite him over for a good chicken dinner. He never comes. Right, okay. Well, Carol, where does... They, I mean, the orthodoxy is to assume that Big Bird being so wondrous and sweet that that Oscar provides you an outlet for another side of you. Yeah, that I always thought it was... That's a real truth. Uh, truth there, because uh, I, I always thought it was really kind of Jim to give me not just only Big Bird, but uh, the, a character that's actually cool, because I was never cool in school. I didn't know how, and I tried to be. I was a jerk, you know. And uh, but uh, Oscar, I keep telling, I, I didn't know he was going to be cool, and uh, or that he has a laugh that some ladies like. <laughs> okay, don't steal my laugh. I don't know how, but uh, Oscar, you were orange in the beginning, weren't you? I was, what but happened? I'm still orange actually. If I took a bath, this is <laughs> oh, I see. This is this just... is uh, mold and moss. <laughs> right, right, right. You don't want to bathe. It's not your. Are you kidding? No, I'm serious. Oh, well, well, I, I I thought of taking a bath once, and just the thought almost made me. I must drop dead. It was just too much to think about. You're not in a very good mood again, are you? No, I, I try not to be. That's why I put <laughs> bricks under my sheets. Right. It's not comfortable. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, I understand. Now, Oscar, you you wouldn't be the grouch otherwise, would you? No. I, I like to be miserable. I'm, get, I'm if, the only time I'm happy is when I'm miserable, and then. But I don't like being happy, so that makes me even more miserable. Oh, I'm a real miserable wreck. <laughs> Thank you, Oscar. I'm going to talk to Carol now. Okay. I, why don't you get out of here? I don't think I will. <laughs> sure. Watch what. Sure. Oscar. Oscar wants sleep. you to leave. Oh, okay, Oscar's back to sleep now. Um, Carol, you are 80 years old. Yeah. I mean, you clearly, it's hard to for any of us to imagine you not being Big Bird and, and Oscar, but but tell me what this is about for you at this point. I mean, are, are, are we? do you intend to continue? This is a, a physically taxing gig. It right? is, yeah. Uh, but I, I, um, I, I've had 45 years now in The Bird and with Oscar as a, a companion. Never liked me still. We tried, I try to make friends. It doesn't work. <laughs> And, uh, Is anyone friends with Oscar? Uh, yeah, my girlfriend. Oh, that's right. You have a girlfriend. Yeah, Grangetta. Grangetta. Yeah. Yes. Go back to sleep. Ugh. So uh, he, I, I really. Uh, What's the question? <laughs> the question is where, where, where you want to, what you want to do at this point. Right. I mean, well, where I wanna, you see I yourself wanna, on this journey. I've set a goal quite a while ago to do it for at least fifty years. I'd like to, if it feels still comfortable and fun, I want to continue doing doing longer than that. I, I don't know how long I'll get to live, but so far my life is pretty much like it was when I was fifty. Um, I'm not in a home yet. <laughs> Hope I never have to. Is be. it fun still? Oh yeah, it's doesn't a lot feel of fun. like work. Yeah, and this doing this uh, film and being at this uh, film festival is uh, a new experience and it's really awesome and fun. And of course, it's fun to be back in Toronto because there's so many great restaurants and and uh, I like to eat. What have you learned with this documentary about just the way that not just Sesame Street but the way that Carol has. Uh, um, touched people around the world, Dave? You know, it's amazing um, to just be a part of this and to see people come up to Carol and tell them his experiences, uh, tell them their experiences. And everyone has a different experience. And people, he's told us this before, people come up to him in tears. And now to actually be here at Hot Docs and see that happen is is amazing. And I think for each of us that made the movie, we have our own relationship to it. And so when, when I would go back and watch Carol's work as we were prepping the film, it just takes you to a place um, of happiness because it takes you to a place when you're a kid and you're with your family and it's just, I don't know, the, the impact I think we knew was, was huge, but I don't know that we realized just quite how deeply people felt about him. We've got about 30 seconds left here, uh, Carol. What, what, what's the greatest lesson you've learned from Big Bird? Well, uh, he, I didn't know he was a teacher at first, but I realized he, he is a teacher and uh, as a matter of fact, it, have we, when we started, we had 9 to 12 million American children every day. Uh, I don't know how many in Canada. Uh, I got letters from Canada. But uh, th so now having done it for 45 years, we realize we've actually had hundreds of millions of, of students. And because of some of the first things they learned was from our show. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm so proud and happy to be part of, of Sesame Street and also have things like this happen. And be treated with respect and nice, which I didn't uh, know much of as a child. It is an honor to have you here. 
Thank, thank you, you thank nice you so much. Nice to see much. you again. Thank you so much for being here. Thank Oscar, thank you for being here. <laughs> yeah, Dave, Dave, thank you. Thank you very much. What a joy.